And always a reminder for myself in this ocean of weakness to be nothing and that Allah Allah's immense rahmah inshaAllah to dress us and to bless us in a month in which to reach to the Divinely Presence and a month in which Allah purified and washed us through the holy month of Ramadan and opens the reality of the binary code. The tenth month representing the one and the nuqt and the immensity of the binary code for all our pursuit of realities is that to take a life in which we continuously deflate and learn how to turn off. And as a result of learning that way of, of nothingness, be nothing, to turn off, then Allah begin to present the soul towards that Divine Reality of the One whom is eternally on. And it can only be achieved by this process of negation and this process of deflating and effacing. That process is not an easy process. It's one thing when tariqah talks about entering into an ocean of nothingness, it's another when the person feels the ocean of nothingness but unfortunately they don't remember the teaching and they don't equate the teaching with whatever state they're feeling. Someone may come or email or approach that, I'm feeling nothing, I feel nothing in myself, I feel no motivation, I feel no desire for anything and Allah reminding within my heart and our hearts and I always speaking only to myself as a reminder, this ocean of immense rahmah is as if we've been thrown into an ocean and we will give analogies for people to understand. Everybody was a big fish in a small pond. So binary code, another way to understand is that we were all big fishes in a very small pond. And in that pond we thought we were the greatest, our diplomas were the highest, our aspirations were so achievable because we saw what was in front of us, we knew what was behind us and we could see to the right and left of us. So imagine then this huge fish. In a little pond you go and see those koi fishes, they're huge, they look like overgrown goldfish. So they don't have even any room to move. And this is 99.9% .9 of dunya people, this is the life they've made. Their surroundings and everything that they're comfortable and familiar with is insurance they want to get, what investments they want to make, what will tomorrow bring, next week bring and two months from now bring, years they plan and they go a course onto that plan. But tariqah coming and teaching annihilation, teaching all these terms and trying to get people to understand them, then when it begins to happen they don't understand what's happening to themselves. And again another analogy for us to understand is that when Allah want to take the servant to the ocean of annihilation, He throws him into an ocean. And that ocean there is no in front of you, there is no behind you, there is no right to you and there is no left to you. You are completely in a state of don't want to use, you think yourself to be hopeless. You find yourself that, I have no understanding of what I want anymore, what I thought I was going to dream anymore, what I thought the goals would be anymore. Can't remember my past, I can't even see what the future will bring for me. And right and left I don't see any land and exactly at that point awliyaullah are coming and teaching it's time now for you to drown. Stop struggling in this ocean, stop thinking, I, I, I got to get a hand on it, I got to get an understanding of, of a future. It's as if you're grasping for some ledge to get a support, to get a, a sense of coordinates, 
and in this ocean of immense, immense greatness and vastness of Allah imagine in the malakut Allah's taking that soul and throwing it into His ocean of rahmah. If He truly wants to guide the servant means He found acceptance in what they're doing and Allah takes the soul, throws it into that ocean and they no longer can even think of what's in front of them, how are they going to achieve anything. What were all the things they left behind them? There's nowhere to put a hand to come up for air because our nature is that we want to understand and to know. We want our mind to understand this path. But the true path has no place for your mind. When Allah really wants to open the reality of zikr, La ilaha illallah. La is on your forehead means that no and this reality of your heart it can only open if the real no opens on your forehead. Means no don't use here, Allah will not let you use here to understand Him and His ocean, His vastness, His rahmah, His mercy and He definitely won't let you use this to understand His plan. So this is not a faculty to understand Allah So then in that ocean this began to die. So many people have the signs of maybe like a mentally not right because they don't understand, they feel very down, they feel very uncoordinated. Exactly for those who have medical conditions this is something different. If you are not someone from a medical condition but you have of a of a sense within your being, I don't understand anymore. It's exactly that ocean of rahmah that Allah is throwing the servant in where they can't get a grasp of it and they can't figure it out and they're not supposed to figure it out. Allah is trying to shut off the head. So in this binary code, in this binary reality Allah throw the soul into this ocean of vastness and the only thing the soul can do is drown in Allah's rahmah. But it has to give its struggle up. Many are still struggling trying to grasp, trying to go out and to, to realize what, what, what's happening, they become sad, become depressed, become anxious trying to figure everything out. and anxiety and, 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 and all sorts of conditions is coming on to a person whom is drowning in Allah's rahmah. And the guidance is coming to teach that what to be anxious about? Who can harm you if Allah is protecting you? Why are you anxious? So something within you is, uh, is struggling in this drowning. Who can fire you if Allah's paying you? Then you're <laughs> trying to figure your, where, where's the rizq coming from? Where, 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 who's going to be hurting me from here and to there? So imagine now everything how magnified it is. Now you're facing uh, black plague, black fungus now coming. Every type of ta'oon coming, every type of COVID coming, <laughs> everything is not, is not stopping. All of that and Allah has the soul of these servants whom Allah found and accepted their guidance. They're facing an ocean of, of not understanding anything and in that ocean the struggle and how much struggle you have in it that's, that's between you and your Lord, how much you want to be anxious, how much you want to be nervous, how much you, you, you want to try to control, how much you want to make yourself to be depressed. And if you sit and you listen to their guidance was to meditate. You don't have to have to do a lot of different zikrs and, and try to be the best of the students. The best student is the one whom understood how to make tafakkur, not the one whom prayed the most, did the most zikrs and all of these practices but they were able to connect. Only through that connection and the life that Allah gave like a little flame within the heart 
meditation, tafakkur, contemplation, we want to call it in Urdu what? What do we call tafakkur in Urdu? Tafakkur. Babaji awareness, <laughs> enlightenment, whatever you call it, don't let the vocabulary to distract you. Some people say, we don't have meditation in Islam. Islam is the, is the secret of all tafakkur and meditation. Allah gave a light within the heart and it's your responsibility and my responsibility to nourish it and to bring it to its reality. You're supposed to focus on it, to guard it, to try to nourish the light to strike its eternal flame instead of something that can quickly be burned out with a little test here and there and the wind come and the faith of that person will dissipate and go. This whole process was to nourish this little flame of faith, build it into like a raging fire in which Allah make it to be like a shams, a sun and it's a lit and it's eternally lit and nobody can turn it off except Allah So in that state of faith, in that state of being thrown into that ocean of rahmah, the immensity of shawwal we said why people feel absolutely Ooh, after Ramadan because Allah was pumping lightning in Ramadan. Qadr was coming and, and hitting especially tariqah people whom they're connected to these big power plants of realities. Their hearts electrified with that ocean. Now comes the month of Shawwal and Allah throws the soul into this immense ocean of rahmah in which there is no way to see the front, back, right or left. Because Allah vastness can never be understood and it's not an ocean that the mind can grasp, ah oh, I see where this is going. No you'd have no idea where it's going. You don't know how you'll be supported, you don't know how you're going to live and how you're going to die and anything you think is still far from its reality. Nobody foresaw any of these things that happened in the last year and that was just a small sign that you planted and plotted your life, did you plot for this? No. Did you think that you were going to survive with nothing but a runny nose? Alhamdulillah. What comes next? It's in Allah's hands. So it means this vastness of this ocean and this reality, we say it but when people are experiencing it they're all panicking and and everybody is anxious and somebody going to hurt me, somebody going to take this from me, somebody going to take everything away from me, I'm not going to be a good one, I'm the bad one. All of these are the reality of that ocean that Allah jumped the soul into that ocean. And then Mawlana Shaykh described that in this ocean of immense rahmah and mercy, don't don't just struggle all your life but begin to submit. Ya Rabbi, ah, can't, I can't control the future and I completely am accepting of that in all my reality Ya Rabbi. And that's why our zikr and our salawats and our meditation because the meditation and the connection is a light begins to come into your soul that gives you the tranquility like an oxygen mask that go down, don't worry. And as soon as they have that tranquility of the light and the fires of the shaykh dressing them because their actions are good. Their character is good, all of those were necessary. But if you yelling and screaming, talking bad, having bad character, bad, there's no fires reaching to you and yeah I, I, you should be panicking. But for everyone whom is trying their best, keeping the best of character, best of, of ways and look to the shaykh's life how they've been tested, how they've been crushed, how they've been insulted and humiliated and they keep the best of manners and keep their practices. And Allah gave them like a life support that as much as they're going down they're breathing from somewhere else because they're in that ocean of rahmah and just going down. Once they finish with their struggle finish trying to comprehend every aspect of whatever Allah is doing to them, they begin to submit and go down into that ocean of rahmah as if like they're drowning. They just stop the fight, stop the struggle. You're not going to know in front of you, you're not going to know behind you, you don't know who's coming for you, you don't know who cares for you or who hates you, who loves you, it's not, it's not important. 
there's no on the right, there's no on the left, it's just Allah's oceans of taslim and the servant begin to go down. Only in that state they are now understanding the state of death before death, they feel themselves if they've died. As the state of that death is increasing then their reliance on Allah is increasing. That no good can come to me except by Allah no harm can come to me by Allah except by Allah Nothing can reach to me except by Allah nothing can be taken from me except by command of Allah And this is the tawakkul, this is their reality of their shahada. That your imitated shahada when you came through the door of Islam, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa habibahu wa rasuluhu, all of that was is an imitation. The reality of the testimony of faith and the shahada is to live it. That I believe there is nothing but Allah. Nothing can come to me except through Allah. Nothing can be taken from me except Allah. And my only salvation is in the love of Muhammadun Rasulullah. If you are Muhammadiyun and your lights and love of of the Holy Prophet is dressing you, imagine what type of blessings are in that ocean for a Muhammadan soul in which Allah begin to dress them in their tawakkul and their submission and in their belief and their taslim. That Allah said, I'm your provider, I give to you, I dress you, I bless you, swim in my ocean now instead of trying to be on the surface. And, and fighting to, to swim on the top, submit and as they submit they're swimming deep under the ocean of Allah and they breathe through that ocean of Allah Means their breath and the reality of the breath is that they're not thinking the breath from outside is sustaining them, their true iman took and they understood that even their nafas is from Allah so why not breathe under the ocean? So it's big, means we struggle because we're on top, <laughs> I have to breathe here. When the reality of taslim is, is coming to the servant and it takes time, this is not something overnight. These are people who are struggling and this path is of a struggle. They're in that ocean and they may be in that ocean for years and struggling with every aspect of their life. Until one day Allah opened for their heart just to taslim and submit and they begin to go down. And they go down they realize, no Allah doesn't want harm for them. But at that point when they went under they said, now you're alive because you breathe with my izza and with my might. And they breathe in from that ocean of reality means their breath is in complete reliance and tawakkul of Allah not even for a moment they think that the air was giving them life but it's Allah is giving them life and death, Allah is giving everything to them. Now look how people are on the surface scared to death for their breath. This, this sickness when it comes it goes after the breath and lungs of people, the difficulty of breathing, the fear of that I can't get a deep enough breath in. And you have to take the nebulizers and the, the, the medicines to open, the steroids to open your lungs for their capacity. All of these Allah is giving to all His creation now. That all people now are scared to death of their breath and are they going to have a breath, are they going to catch their breath. But this ocean of taslim, when the servant is submitting and submitting and submitting they begin to go down and they realize Allah is my breath. Allah's might and majesty is flowing and then Allah is the one whom determines I breathe and not breathe. And by that might and majesty the servant is being dressed and blessed and then opening that reality of La ilaha illallah and they understood that this rahmah and this mercy and this blessing in this ocean is only coming to me because of my love of Muhammadun Rasulullah Otherwise Allah to throw you in an ocean of, of this immensity and this rahmah and dress you from all of this for what? Because you love whom He loves 
and Allah want to give you His Divinely love and that is the leaving of dunya and leaving of the mulk into the oceans of Malakut and the oceans of the heavenly kingdom. So shawwal in a binary reality is immense. You're on top and you think you're on and your life is on, you're the big fish that's your one. To be nothing he throws you into an ocean. It's not a, it's not a philosophy that the shaykh is talking about and we go around and say, I'm nothing, you tell your friends, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, you know, after you please. It's when, <laughs> it's when Allah says, oh you want to go into my oceans of nothingness? Alhamdulillah I throw you, throw you into an ocean of nothingness and, and uh, you start to have fear and anxiety. Allah sends all of these things, send somebody to come after you, to attack you, to want to harm you, to want to fire you, want to take away your sustenance. Now what are you scared? Why do you have fear? Why do you have anxiety? Through all of that whatever coming to you keep good character, keep a softness, keep the love and muhabbat and keep saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah, increase your shahada, increase your, your kalima all the time if that's the issue. If you're not gaining your faith and losing your faith in the process it's a, it's a difficult way to go. But not to, to lose your faith then extreme difficulty. We pray that Allah open deeper, deeper understandings for us of a binary system and our system of how to turn off. It's not easy to take this human that's been on all their life to bring them into a shutdown phase. Maut qabl al-mawt is not easy, every aspect of death before death is that the money, the fear, every aspect of our life is going to have a shut off. And that shut off valve begin to come and as it's coming the servant is entering into that state of death and every aspect of their life is dying. All the plans that they had died, all the, the hopes and aspirations they had they died. And as a result the servant is entering into the ocean of taslim and submission and that Allah's hope has to rise within your heart, Allah's desire has to be in your heart. What Allah planned for you is important not what you planned for yourself. What Allah planned for you when I created you with immense love and I blew my spirit into you, gave you life, I created you with the purpose and a reason. And I wanted you to achieve that. You came to earth and decided your, your, your own government now and you will do what you want to do. So out of this 99.9.9% percent of the people, the turuqs and the ahlul haqqaiq are bringing those souls back that remember what Allah wanted for you. So where to run, why to run away from it? This is an ocean of immense love, go down, go down into this ocean to be nothing. And other times we talked about it, it's like a soil and you're just a seed. At some point you're going to take your seed and you're going to plant it in the soil. Again that's a death before death, you've clearly been buried, you're in that soil. The soil begins to rip you apart. There's no… after 40 days if you look into the soil there's no more seed because the soil's job was to annihilate that creation. And then when Allah won't a new beginning will grow and a little blossom begins to come out, a little green stem begins to come out and the new reality will appear and this is what Allah wanted, I created you for that. I created you for the, the blossom that was about to appear, I may make it into a tree that's just beautiful, I may make it into a rose bush that's immensely beautiful and it will attract many people to you. I may make you into a pomegranate tree where you have thousands of benefits and thousands of fruits will be given and each, each pomegranate has hundreds of seeds. And it makes hundreds of pomegranates, meet from one person how much Allah can multiply the blessings and the reality that distributed to humanity. 
But as a seed we're worth nothing, what can you do with a seed other than throw it at somebody? And even that after you throw it, it you lost it, it's gone. It served a very un, unpurposeful purpose on this earth. Subhana rabbika rabbal azzatama yasifoon wa salaamu ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen and none of this is for anyone to harm themselves, to drown themselves, these are all spiritual analogies. These are not do you going to inflict something on yourself to reach. This is all about the process of not knowing, not feeling, not understanding what, what the purpose is. And Allah want to bring the servant into taslim and submission. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon, salaam ala mursaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.